Oh, today we've got two Triumphs in here. Both have a common fault. Not so much a fault, it's a, a, a setting up procedure. So we're going to show you later on, we're going to run these bikes up and show you what's not quite right with these two bikes. And when they are finished, we'll have another video, which I'll probably do on my phone, and you can see the difference. So they're going to be done later. Um, quick update on what's been happening in the workshop. Since the last time, we've had, we've got another Triton here now, but we had another Triton. We had a Triton that came down from Watford, and anyone who knows the Busy Bee, uh, is a bike that was belonged to a guy uh, who was very much a part of the Busy Bee in the day. Uh, he passed away and his son has obviously inherited the bike. And it was a, a, a quite a tricky one for me because he brought the bike to me and he came down. He wanted to spend a day in the workshop recommissioning his dad's bike. And uh, he was quite, you know, it felt a lot to him because the bike had not been ridden or moved since his dad tucked it away. Had a few thoughts with it. We found that, um, remember now back in but the gearbox, we had some broken teeth on the kickstart mechanism. Uh, the carbs weren't right, they needed cleaning, sonic cleaner, a lot of going through. But you'll see that in the video. And what was really nice, I couldn't do it in one day because the brakes had, had a conversion. It got modern disc brakes on the front, so the calipers were all seized. And we've shown that before with a T160. When we put the caliper in the vise and we heat it up and we have the pump grease into it, get the pistons moving, you, you remember probably us doing that. So that was quite a long job. But when the bike was finished, he came down and he started it up and he was quite emotional and then he took the bike away and he was made up with it. And he still keeps in touch now. So that was that one. Do you remember outside we had the DBD34, which is actually behind Alex at the moment, uh, Clubman? and we had a scrambler which was partially together. We had to recommission it. So we put the mud guard on, bash plate, we wired it up, we put a small carb conversion, an air box, various things, and we got that running really lovely. The idea was to build it to a spec of a green, uh, a green laner, basically a, a bike you, lose, you use on green lanes. Uh, so it was nicely finished off. Started easily, got a lovely twitch on the exhaust, and the customer decided to keep it. That's gone back to Yana White. Nice little bike. After that, we were working on uh, Tom's bike on the Golden Flash. Uh, a lot of work on that bike, one that we wouldn't normally do, uh, just that I know this guy and I said, okay, but we have mentioned before, a lot of work needs to be done. So that's come on well, and we're going to detail on that. Um, we've just finished here um, another Norton. We've got a Commando behind here, which is the Roadster. We've got my bike by the side of it, which is the Interstate. So you've got the variation there. And I think there's not much in the age gap between the two. So you've yeah, been quite busy in here, but we're gonna, in a moment, we'll start these bikes up and we'll show you um, the faults that we've got to put right with these. This one shouldn't be in here very long. Um, the customer's obviously had it built to his spec, but it's got a few niggling faults with it. So the Triton is now on the bench, and because we don't have a main stand, we have to use the scissor jack. Um, it's always a problem with a bike. If you haven't got a main stand, it does make it hard to work on. Now we're gonna start really talking about the issues he had, and he's told me that he has trouble selecting gear, force neutrals. Now, because we got it on the scissor jack, we can actually fire it up and run it through the gears. I can't see anything wrong with the gearbox. It selects nicely, but with all these old British bikes, it has to be a positive gear change. Uh, if, if you just tap the gear lever and don't depress it properly, it won't always select properly into that gear. We just, I've put another piece of rub on here because that wasn't very good. The trouble with Tritons is they're all hand built and your, your ride position varies on so much. So we, we know we've got to look at the clutch because sometimes when you kick it over, the clutch slips and it's a very light clutch. So I'm going to whip the primary chain case cover off and we'll probably just tighten those springs up. And if they are weak springs, I've got another set of springs. So that should be that. 
But the main thing I can see wrong with this is, is carburation. It isn't right. Um, we don't have a choke cable on these carbs. We just tickle these carbs. We're firing up and it'll sound okay on tick over, but you blip it and it'll die. Now that can be uh, where the slides aren't quite synchronized on the cutaway. Well, I say cutaway is when you open up the throttle, one will lift before the other. Or it could be the needle position, it's a little bit weak. But we're firing up now, but this is where you come back to basics. You have to like fire it up first, get an idea what it is. And my procedure would be to take the uh, pancake filters off. I will check the cutaway of the cables to make sure the slides open at the same time. But because I know it's a bit weak, I'll probably whip the tank off, take the slides out the carbs and check the needle position. So we're just gonna fire out a few now. We've got two taps on here. So we put both on, because I don't know how much fuel we've got in there. And we tickle both of these. As I said, we've, we have run it once this morning. We just depress it till it floods out. And because we've got a 12 volt um, uh, ignition system now, we have a key to turn it on. It's not on a conventional K2F magneto. already but it sounds a bit lumpy there but if I now so when you flip the throttle it's not it, it dies before it picks up so that's not excessive movement so that could be where you've got one slide slightly in front of the other so it lifts away first but really just set the carbs up correctly and the clutch is quite light and it didn't do it then but it will slip sometimes when you kick it over but having one of these scissor jacks is ideal in the workshop because then you can you can check things over now what we're going to do now we're going to select it into gear Yeah, try and one up. So I'm going to pull the clutch in, put the foot on the wheel. It goes into gear nice. It's not grating. We always make sure that we're ticking over before we select the gear. Put the clutch out. Now, I'm just going to put this down, it makes it easier. Back to third. Back to second. Neutral. First. we've got a, a real issue with the gearbox. I think we just need to just set his carbs up, set his clutch up and go from there. Also something else that he's asked me to do is put some different, we've got pancake filters on the carbs. We've got these gauze bow mouths and I think these will look a bit more period so we're going to put those on also because it's a trite, it should normally have the clip-ons and the rear sets. We've got, we've got the rear sets, but the clip-ons have been done away with. It's got high bars on now, which are okay, but I've got a set of bars here, which a customer of mine has said to me, you're most welcome to find a customer if you want to sell those or whatever you want to do, move these on. Now these actually, where you've got the spine for the, the clamps, these actually are in line. And these are a nicer bar too. Because a lot of people, 
comfortable. When they get a bit older, they've had Tritons all their life, and it's, it is quite a low ride position. We've mentioned this loads of times with the bikes I've got. And actually, riding the bike with high bars, why not? You know, if, if you want to carry on riding that bike and you don't want to be right down low, it's fine. But I think these will look quite nice on there. So this one is quite, I think, quite, quite a straightforward, easy, sort out job, really. Just set it up properly. And we've spoken about that one. Um, we've got the Daytona in here at the moment. Triumph Daytona 500. Belongs to Nigel. Um, clean bike um, uh, clean clinic. Bike yeah, clean bike clinic. Uh, he's asked me just to run through it. Same thing again, wants the carbs sorting out. We're firing it up now. But he got hold of this and he's painted it. In a slightly different colour from standard. It's a metallic grey, which actually looks quite nice. These are a nice little bike. The Daytona, we always called like the Tiger 90, in, in the, which was a 350, and the 500, the Baby Bonnie. But this twin carb, you know, the Tiger 100 was a quick little bike. You know, it, it's, yeah, they're quite revvy, but a much lighter bike than an A10. You know, something like you know, the Flash or the... RGS or an A65 even. So we've just fired this up now. So we turn the taps on, and I know this one, it does like to be flooded quite a bit. This is a trouble when you haven't got the choke cables with the choke slide. Sometimes they do need quite a lot of tickling. running this morning so it went first kick then. It's got a nice sound to it. Just again like I say just really case to set the carbs up correctly. And it, it's not over happy to tick over at the moment. See I'm flipping the throttle here and it's dying on me. Sounds almost, similar to the other one, a little bit weak on the pickup. So another case of checking the needle position, make sure the cables are set up correctly and the slides move at the same time. Pilot jet-wise, on tick over like this, it sounds about right. But because it's still at point here, we're all checking the condition timing. And this one also wants, we've got a switch here to change and we've got a number plate to put on the back here. We'll make some spaces up because it's a modern type light fitting. Give an all change, but quite a nice little bike. And I think actually Nigel's going to probably keep that for a while and probably will probably out it. So it be one that will be available. So yeah, two bikes with very similar, I say problems, issues that need sorting out. Okay, um, very quickly bringing you up to where we are with um, Tom's bike. The Tom's got the golden flash. This is a black version, they called it a golden flash, but you could have it in two colours basically, black or gold. Um, so the gearbox has been put back in, rebuild on the gearbox. We put some uh, new fork stanchions in the forks, we'll show you in a moment the old ones. It needs the loom to be put in now, we're going to put a new loom in here. A lot of work on this one, uh, but uh, things that sometimes, you know, catch you out sometimes. And, on here, the main stand, well, we refurbished this. So before, welded on the side of the main stand was this platform. The idea was to put your foot on here to pull it down. Now, look at the amount of metal there. And when it was in the raised position, it was sticking out the side. So it meant that the side stand was cut down. This came to me like a prop. It had been cut off here, it had a piece of rubber on it. So what I've done here, I've extended it and put a, um, a foot on there for him. So when it's off the main stand, it sits nicely on the floor. Because there's nothing wrong with this bit, and it's like, why, you know, spend any more? Because it's, this job 
is not profitable. It's so much work going into this, but because I know him, I was prepared to take it on. So we reduced it down to this. All you need is just a peg, just to find it when it's underneath, underneath the exhaust to bring it down to the ground level. So that was that. Uh, we'll show you the staunchions. Now, staunchions are the, the fork leg. They get called various things. I'm gonna take one out. And these come from Kidderminster. We had a new pair. Now, the reason why these were changed, there's a lot of stepping in here, a lot of wear, pitting, and the bushes here, these are the bushes. And when this is in the bike itself, you could get hold of, there's pictures, you'll see the pictures on the, on the video. Uh, you can see a lot of movement in the fork leg. So new staunchions, new bushes. So now we've rebuilt the front end. We've had the linings uh, uh, redone through Villiers services and they've rebonded the linings on there. So everything's done there on the front end. We're literally just waiting now for me to put the loom in and SRM hopefully soon will have the, the crankcase with the crankshaft back that had to be ground, the time and side push done and also the spines re, re put back onto the crankshaft where they're badly worn so they've had to be built up and recut. So we should see this job out of here fairly soon hopefully. Big job, um, a lot of time. So that's where we are. What we also want to talk about here is I'm always aware that when you do a job for a customer, you need to not prove you fitted the parts, and, but I always feel it's a good thing to send the customer back all the parts that you've replaced. So when you've got a list of spare parts, and it does come expensive, that the parts are on the invoice that you fitted, but they also get back all those warm parts, so as much as you can obviously chuck together. Some things like gaskets now obviously are not important in, in small bits and pieces. But you're looking through here on this job. I mean, we got like, these were brackets off the seat because the seat didn't fit anything like it does now. It was not fitted on the front nose properly. That was all up in the air. Uh, there's things in here like primary chain. There's lots of bushes, gearbox bushes, gearbox bearings. Uh, there are valve guides, engine bolts here. Um, pistons are here. Now, this one's okay, but I think we showed in the video before on one side here, a lot of scoring, it's picked up the piston badly. We managed to hone this, this barrel out because it has been relined and um, it's fine. And we're gonna go on to that in a moment. So new pistons. We're gonna talk, oh, seat, seat bracket, new one put on there. We're gonna talk about the, the other two things on the bench here, the cylinder head and the barrel. Uh, I think the first thing we're going to talk about is we're talking about the head. We talk about heads quite often. Now this one, same sort of thing again, we put new valve guides in here because we have a combination of guides here. Now these are the cast iron ones, these, these three here, and this one is a, a bronze one. This is what we tend to use, these are better quality now, but this one was loose in the head. These were badly worn, so it was a case of putting new valve guides in, which you can see through the springs, they've been put in place. And there's a little video, I don't know whether it'll come on this one we're showing you, but how we go about this. Take the valves out the head, take anything off the head, like the bolts at the manifold. We put the head in the oven, we get it up to temperature, and we have a, a drift I've shown you before I have made up and I can drift these, these guides out. We put the new ones in the freezer to get them chilled, nice and cold. Uh, and once we drifted these out, if that's lost its heat, we put it back in the oven a little bit to get the heat back into it before we insert the new valve guides. And when the new ones are chilled, they drift in quite nicely. But sometimes with the bronze ones, we need to put a reamer not just a case of like installing the valve guide. This is a, a spiral reamer. Now the idea of this, you would just put that through there and you turn that and gradually put pressure on and go through there. That is the correct size to the valve that we're using. The difference between that reamer and we've shown these reamers before, this is an adjustable reamer. So you can adjust the blades on this one 
and turn them out. So what we always do really with a job, we coat it. Now this has only had a quick clean up. Um, it's a presentation of this bike. Now with our project bike we'll probably have all the guides out and we'll sandblast it. But this was just a tidy up and this is something you guys can do as well at home. So brush off, well what I would say is degrease it first, get the grease out of it and give it a good wire brush back. This is cast iron. Cast iron heads, I should have spoken about this before. An engine with a cast iron head will run quieter than an alley head. It's what the A10 and a lot of the bikes had, the models which weren't performance bikes. They were more of just a, a, an everyday work bike. Brilliant cylinder head, doesn't give any trouble. Um, yeah. But what you do find is the paint will come off sometimes and that's why they're repainted and you need to make sure you use paint that is going to put out of the heat. So what I tend to do here is I use brake cleaner, then I use a wire brush and I stick it in the oven and get it nice and warm, not over hot, and I will spray it with a, a good engine paint. And because it's warm, you can get a good coverage of paint on there. Also pays you to use masking tape. Now, I did have masking tape around the um, valves on here. This is where the rocker boxes sit on. And also on the expansion chamber underneath here, a little bit cleaned up, a little bit over spray. But cover this up, you don't want to get that all painted. And the masking tape won't burn in the oven because that's what we do. We stick it in the oven and get it warm, spray it. And after I sprayed it, and got a decent coverage on there, I'll put it back in the oven for, I don't know, five, 10 minutes, then turn the oven off and let it cool down. And that will bake on there, you'll get a good finish. So we've done the head, the barrel, uh, on this one, we've honed this barrel out. We've shown this before, it wasn't bad. It's had new liners put in here. And if you look here, you can see where the liners put in, put in, in the past. So it's been bored oversized and new liners put in to bring it back to a standard. This has done quite a lot of work. It's an old bike and I think this is on 20s, I think, oversized. So we've got new uh, standard. No, they are standard pistons. So we've got new pistons coming. We've shown one that's scored up. And we've painted this, same again. We've wire brushed that back. And as I said just, here, say just now, it's something you guys can do. Don't have to spend out having it like sandblasted. If you want to spend it, fine, but you can wire brush this back. And don't worry about an oven because when the bike is built back up, this paint will cure when it's warmed up. So when you start the engine up and it gets hot, it will smoke a little bit, the paint will cure off. So yeah, there are various um, types of paint out there, but it always looks nice with a painted barrel. And you can paint in situ. If you've got a head off, say, and you're doing some work on your engine, now I've done this on A65, you can use masking tape. And if you cover it all up well and use brake cleaner, clean out all the grease and wire brush, like I said just now, and blow it out of an airline if you've got that, and spray it in situ. It just gives a nice finish. So that's what we've done. So we're just waiting for, you know, the bottom end of the engine to come back from SRM, and then we can build it up we can finish that project. So that's where Thomas's bike is at the moment. And a little bit of a recap. I know we keep showing this, but we may Thank not show it. We cut the loops off now. We're gonna do our own exhaust system on here. What we're gonna do, we're gonna put a Siamese on here. We're not gonna have the two pipes like you would do on a Spitfire. We're gonna have a Siamese pipe that runs over the primary chain case with a silencer, just like a trophy. Slightly different take, but I think it looked nice. So that's why we're spending a bit of time before we send it off for painting to know what we're gonna do. Got a welder bracket in here, so there's no point sending it until we've finished it. And we will push on with this one now. Okay, so we've got another commando here. We've got a Roadster. Now we've done several here, as you know, over the past two years or more. We've had um, Interstates, we've had Tritons and uh, different things with Norton engines. But this is a nice commando. Um, it came to me as a non-runner. In fact, I've got, I've got Graham here as the owner. He's popped over today, so we're gonna run through the bike, what we've been doing on here for him. Now, just show you, Graham. So when you brought it to me, I did mention to you about, it had K&M filters. Didn't have the filter box, which we've got now. 
So we put it back to how it should be. So it's got the filter box here. We've basically, we've we had to run through the engine. We've had the timing case cover off. We've done the normal thing, which we do check behind. We take the points assembly out. In this case, it's got Boyer. We take all that out and we check the, the cam chain and we change the adjuster. We check the pump seal and the pressure release valve. Now this one was sticking, which is a, a dodgy thing as we probably would, people will know. So always make sure that plunger moves properly in that body. So we've got a new pressure release valve in here. The gearbox had a warm bush in here on the gear selector. So the end cover was taken off, new bush put in, reamed into place. We changed all the oil lines. There are some pictures of some of the pipes that are kinked and badly chafed where they've run through on the horn that's situated at the back here. We have put a, an RGM valve in here and these are okay. Um, a lot of people don't like them, but Norton engines have a tendency of wet something. So if you're not gonna ride that bike for a period of time, it does decant the oil down to the bottom of the sump and wet sump. But if you have a valve, and I've mentioned to people before, with a commando, take the seat off, fire the bike up, and make sure you've got a return by taking your cap off your oil tank. Just check that. And you'll see it coming through. Yeah, yeah, do that. Um, so we clean all the cases up. On the other side, we just mentioned this as well because we're doing the engine at the moment. So we had the all the exhaust system off and we'll go to that bit in a moment. But we had the primary chain case opened up. We've had the clutch apart, cleaned the plates because what can happen with a push rod all contamination gets into the plate, so we've put the mod on the end of the um, clutch shaft here, which works. It's like a special nut with a seal inside. The carbs have been through the sonic cleaner. One carb had this particular body badly worn here. I did say to Graham we weren't sure what it would be like, these old carbs, because with ethanol fuel, but they have cleaned up. It doesn't seem to be an issue. We've had the wheels out. We put new tires, tapes and tubes on. We cleaned the rims all up. We sorted the brake out. Back brake as well. We checked all the linings. Put new cable on here. Uh, because we've got the airbox now, we've got the ignition switch back to where it should be. Originally, when it had the K&Ns on, when it came in, it had the switch down here. We've done quite a lot to it, but it's now, it's a nice presentable bike. Oh, chain guard. The tail fin was missing off the back here and the spacers weren't there. So it's tidied up well. And we'll, we'll do a start on it now. We're, we're far up for you and you can hear it. This is the important bit, does it go? Because you've got no choke control, we need to flood both these, um, these carbs. This one doesn't flood quite easy, so easy because we haven't got a lot of fuel in it. We just depress it quite a bit. And we do this one as well. A little bit more in that one. Right, turn ignition on. Get a red light. So one kick, very smooth engine. What we're doing at the moment, we just take the seat off, we make sure we show you that the oil return is good. good. Well, that's warmed up, the tick over will increase slightly. But what we're looking for here. the camera, we pick up the oil return pipe here. And this is something we always check because we've got this valve. People always worry about valves, but you always do a check on it to make sure you got that return. It isn't a problem. Yeah, it would. It should do. 99%. Seat back on. You like that? Thank you very much. Uh, 
how long you let it warm up for, Dave? Um, well, I get all the old bikes. You don't chase them like a mod. It's not a modern bike. You always give it a bit of time to warm up. Be a bit, a little bit sympathetic with it. But just ride it normal. Don't. It, but these bikes, they are so torque. You don't need to rev them. You know, they've got so much power. I think, really, to be honest with you, the Commando is one of the better classic bikes. It's a bike you can use with mon modern traffic. I, I would say because you've got indicators, you've got a good powerful engine, it will sit on the motorway at 70 miles an hour quite happily. But they're a good all-round bike, and as we mentioned before, parts are plentiful. They still make all the parts of these. And although people say, oh, it's got the ice elastic, if it's set up correctly, it's not an issue. And um, yeah, it gives you a nice ride. But we've got one thing we need to get, that Graham's going to sort this out in his own time, the rev counter, the clock isn't working, the mechanism inside. So the clock needs to come off and be sent away or replaced. But everything else is working. With commandos, the lights work with a second position on the ignition switch. So we turn the key one more position, and then we get up the pilot light, and we have the rear light on. Now, so put your main beam on, flick the switch over, That's it, it's on that way. And then we have the high and low beam is done on here. So that way is just a side light. And there you have your main light. And we have on here, we've got horn. Remember now, indicators are on this one. Oh, they're both independent. They vary sometimes how they've been set up. But yeah, it's a nice bike. And the kill switch is on the red one on the top here. But we've got now a nice bike that ticks over. The thing about commandos is when you put them on the main stand, they're quite easy to roll on. What do you mean roll on? Well, they go up easy. There's no effort. Okay. Big bike, but it's probably one of the easiest bikes to get onto a main stand. Yeah. That's it, Dave. That's it. Yeah. You you, stop it on the switch there and then turn your key off. Yeah. But you always know because you've red lights on, okay? 